beast, isn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back. No, I'm just concentrating on not losing the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him, man. It. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different. A good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm out of my boat. I'm observing the lockdown rules for recreational fishing. So it's a rule of two and local use only. So I'm really close to where I normally berth. Um, yeah, but I'm out of my boat. I've got four rods that aren't rigged and I'm not fishing. I am at anchor. I'm just off the Hamble coastline. Um, coastline, shoreline just down from Victoria Country Park. Now, I've got, I'm trying to get myself more organized. So I'm trying to make minimal kit, maximum effect. And I'll sort of give you an idea. So I've got four rods now. I've bought my two new nice rods and I've got my two cheapy rods. I'm gonna put all four in the water. So I'm gonna rig up, bait up and put out. And I'll show you what I'm up to. So this is, no target species, anything is appreciated, even if I was to get a bite today, because the next week's forecast is absolutely dire. So any opportunity, today's opportunity is, is it was too good to miss. I just had to get out. So without further ado, let's get on with it. I'm not French, by the way. Um, yeah, so I've got four rods, reels are on, the lines are threaded, and that's just like, that's their normal position. And that is all of my terminal tackle for today. And that includes spares. So separated into a couple of bags, I've got running ledgers. Really short running ledgers. The least complication possible, and that is the rig. So I'll get one out and we can have a look. So the running ledger rig that I'm actually going to use, this is a pre-made trace and that is a foot long with a sliding weight holder and there's quite literally just a swivel at either end. And I think I've put that on 70 pound rig body. 70 pound rig body and that is it. So that is the first thing that clips onto our rig. For the rods, these one I've chosen to buy. These are the ones that I saved up for. And they are seven foot four, 20 to 30 pound class, Shakespeare Ugly Sticks. Nice rod, highly recommended by many, many people. And the Daiwa Slosh Reels. When I say slosh, that's the SL30 SH. I've gone for 30, not a 20. And it's loaded with 40 pound Barkley Whiplash Braid. So that's the rig. That's the rod, that's the reel, that's the line. We're cooking by gas. So literally, there's a Termalink on the end of that braid, Trident Termalink, and that's the rig body. Park that for a minute. So I've got another four in there. So there's enough for each of the rods plus a spare. And then everything else in here, they're just hook traces hook traces with some with single hook some with panel hook um, nothing fancy as simple as I can get it really good. so we take one of these hook snoods out and because the main body finishes in a swivel these have got termalinks on them and what that does is that means I can just unclip and clip on I can bait spare traces up if it's not that busy and you want to keep refreshing your bait to try and make something happen. So that is about a four and a half, five foot hook snood and a size four row camasan hook. Four row camasan hook. I love them. Lovely hooks. We'll get some bait. So I had a lot of success the last time I was out using sand eel. And if I'm completely honest, and you know what I'm going to say, I love the ray, and rays 
They love the sand eel. So very simply, quite small sand eel these. It's very hard to get the better sized ones, they just don't seem to be available. And just elasticating two sand deal together. Elasticate two sand deal together, break it away, and you end up with that. Nice bit of rag, keep your hands clean. I've now got dirty squid, this is unwashed squid. I don't see why you'd want to wash all the flavour out of it if you're going to be using it for fishing. Some people do. So unwashed squid, take the head off. I can use that for a separate bait. In fact, I might just put it on the next rig that I put out. Take out all the gubbins. Could save that for ground bait, but it's in there as ground bait. Wrap it round your sand eel. And we need some elastic to hold that in place. I don't do any tenderizing or beating or slashing or, or anything like that. I just want to get this in the water as quick as possible. Now if you're wondering why I'm moving around a bit, it's because there's a lot of shipping moving past at the moment and this is the wake from the shipping so it's not actually rough out here at the moment. It's just a little bit of wash from some of the big ships that have been going past. There's another guy fishing to my port. <laughs> port, you say? What's that? <laughs> That's boating terminology. You've got to get with the boating terminology. Port is your left-hand side. Starboard is your right. Um, I just want to make sure that this line is inside the bait. Mm. So I'm just threading it down through. There's no finesse in what I'm doing here. I just want to get this bait out and then pull it up inside. And actually, I don't have to do anything else to that. That hook is proud, it's good to go. I want to use the minimal size weight that I have to. So I think I'm going to go, let's have a look. I think we'll go with that. I think that might be a 10 ounce weight. So that hook snood clips onto that rig body. All easily detachable. I hope the wind's not too much on the microphone. Clip this weight on. And she's good to go. She's gonna catch me a fish. You catch me a marlin. Let's see how much this tide runs now when this goes in. Yeah, it's a fair old chunk. What have I got there? Got my rod tip tangled up. I'm interested to see today how this braid performs for bite indication and, and just for the generic fishing compared to the mono that I have been using. Just let that tide take that back a bit. Now that weight Definitely on the bottom, but that might be a little bit too much. You don't want more than you, you know, you want to get away with the absolute minimum, really. And I like the clickers. So that's one in the water. Let's get another one. Same again, really. So we've got hook snoods, we've got our rig bodies. Got another rig body here. I might go for a smaller weight on this next one just to make a comparison, just to see how it goes and push it further away from the boat. There we go. Double sandy on squid. I'd love, because you know I love them, I'd love a ray today. I'd love a ray, but seriously, anything is welcome. From a ting to a doggy, as long as there's not too many of them, you get plagued by them. 
I'm not going anything posh for this one. It's not even that big a bait really. It is literally, I am just putting on a squid head. Let's get the weight clipped on. Let's get the bait clipped on. Make sure we're not all tangled up. And I am going to cast this one slightly out from the boat just to get it some distance from the boat. Because that weight on that one is sitting really heavy. That's sat right underneath the boat at the moment. I don't really want that because as the boat swings around. Let's get that one a little bit further away from the boat. I do like to use the clickers because as you can see when I'm busy doing something else it's a very good early warning system in case something's going on out of sight in case something is having a little inquiry or even just to pre-warn you if the boat's starting to swing on the anchor. Um, I, <laughs> I know it may seem a little bit monotonous but the same again running ledger that's all it's going to be get it out Get one of these cheapy rods rigged up. I say cheapy rods, they've done me proud so far. I've had some cracking fish already on these. I'm gonna say cracking fish, undulate, bass, eel, all good stuff. Just put that there for a minute and get another hook trace out. I'm only using single hook traces, I'm not using panel hooks at the moment. Um, I don't feel like I actually need a panel set up to present the bait. Um, I think I might change for a bit of a riot on this one. So I've got a squid head out. I've got double sandy on squid. I think I'm gonna go for just straight up bluey on this one. Bluey gives out quite a strong scent trail. I might just chunk bait this one rather than putting any fancy wraps or or bits and pieces. Just put a chunk of chunk of bluey on. The only problem when you do just chunk bait bluey is it has got a tendency if you just sit it literally on the bottom like that, the chance it might come off. It might come off. Um, but yeah, let's give it a go. Nothing ventured. Just a chunk bait of bluey. That would be impressive if that catches something. Mixing it up a bit here. Get this one down behind the boat. Just clipping my weight on. Got a funny th feeling these traces might be a bit long for this today. I might cut them down if they prove to be a problem. We're not in particularly deep water today either. It's only about, I don't know, 15, 16 feet, something like that. Um, So we've got one more rod to go, and then we're all in, in poker terms. One more rig body. <laughs> we're all in. Now to sit down, have a cup of coffee, and a chocky bicky. That's the plan. But you know what happens as soon as you get anything out? Sandwiches, coffee, biscuit, cup of tea. It all goes nuts. We don't mind it going nuts, but we'd like a cup of tea first. So these little um, decathlon rods were £34 for the rod, reel, loaded with line, monofilament, and they're £20, £20 class rods. Now I'm not going to go too technical now, so I'm going to go for this one. 
exactly the same again. I'm just going to go for a chunk piece of bluey because I think there's a fair chance some bass kicking around because there are a lot of bass about at the moment. I think they've just finished spawning, I think, is the, um, is the general idea of what's going on at the moment. But also worth noting that around here seems to just hold quite a large population of bass now. They seem to be doing quite well. They're certainly more prolific than I ever remember them being before. Um, another bluey chunk bait. Decent size hook. It's a 4 row Camasan hook. No posh presentation. It's literally American style, I think that is. I think our American cousins tend to chunk bait like that. And I'm just keen to get all four rods in and get them all fishing. And sit back and relax. I don't know if you can see in the background, but there's an old World War II fortification, like an old pillbox that used to be here to protect Southampton water. Well, it's not that it used to be here, it's still here, but that's what it was used for. Um, we're at slack now, so as expected, it's not fishing particularly well. I've had to put two rods away and fish with two left out. I've got one in close, almost directly under the boat, and one at distance, because as the boat slews from side to side in the slack, what you do is eventually you bring your lines together and you'll tangle. If you put one further out and one close in, then they're not going to compete, they're not going to tangle with each other. And you may see the odd bump on the left rod, but because it's right underneath the boat, the weight's bouncing. The one on the right is at distance and it'll be a little bit smoother. I've got a light drag set and I've got the clickers on. Uh, just in case I'm doing something else and I get distracted and I can't see the rod tips. Um, but yeah, it's quiet. I'm waiting for the turn of the tide. I think the initial flood, the first couple of hours of the flood, is going to be the teller if this is going to fish at all today. I'm not, I'm not overconfident it's going to fish well today, to be honest. This might end up being a boat blank, which is pretty, pretty rare. But I knew I was pushing my luck with coming out because we're, we're pre-storm. Tomorrow there's a big storm front coming through. Um, gale force winds. Um, I thought I'd just squeeze in this quick session. See if we can't winkle something out. Good if we could. But even if I don't, I'm just happy being out here. The weather's not amazing. Light winds. Calm seas. There's one other boat out here that I can see that's fairly close by. Um, yeah. Just enjoying life, to be honest. Fresh air. I was in the office this morning. It's nice to get out, out in the open, out in the fresh air. And play around in my boat. All within the restrictions that are in place at the moment. Rule or two, so there could be someone else here, but we'd struggle with two metre social distancing. So we'd have to wear a mask. Um, and you're allowed to take your boat out and you're allowed to go recreational fishing. Uh, which surprised me that they let that one, that it's specific, there are rules out there at the moment. It doesn't give you an exact distance, so I've stayed in shore, because that's, you know, without taking the mickey, I know there are some seriously difficult times for people, and people just swanning off doing some fishing, probably don't sound that important. Um, but yeah. I've stayed inshore, I've not gone offshore, and I've stayed close. I'm only a couple of miles away from where I I, um, I launched the boat, and the boat is only two and a half, three miles away from where I live. So all in all, I've probably come, in fact, as the crow flies, I'm probably only about three miles away from where I live at the moment. Um, so I am close. If anyone's worried that I'm, I'm forcing an issue with COVID restrictions, I'm fully compliant, I'm doing my bit.
doing what I'm told. Whoa, we're into something here. I thought I saw a bite. Very hard to see a bite at the moment because the boat is slewing around. But there's definitely some movement here. What have we got? What have we got? <laughs> it's a doggy. Doggy. Hey, give a good, good old little knock on there then. Doggy in the boat. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's have a look. He's not that badly hooked, actually. So we'll get him back in. Let's just get hold of him. Just make sure that he's not. I don't know. Oh, my weight's bouncing around. Doggy out the boat. <laughs> do, 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 do. I think I'm going to tidy that up, put that back. If it was good enough for him. Oh, maybe not. He's made a right old mess of that. Okay, it's worth showing now, I suppose. I'm not very organised at the moment. I'm still finding my feet with some of these little routines and things. Take my weight off. Just so it doesn't go clanking around the boat. And that is that hook trace removed. Um, one that I've already done. Prepped. It's exactly the same again. This is blue and squid. I'll hook it on. That's it hooked on. Put my weight back on. Could have left the weight off, I know, but I'm trying to get into some kind of routine where I'm not tripping over myself and I'm not beating things up. And that's the rig. It's quite a long flowing trace. I'll probably get away with a shorter one if I wanted to. But if there's doggies about, there might be other stuff about. Well, we saved the blank with a good old doggy. Sun's gone away, tide started to turn. Boat's facing the opposite way now. I'm just hoping it doesn't pull the anchor free. If it does pull the anchor free, because it's going to turn the anchor back on itself, um, I'll have to re-anchor, but it'll only take a few minutes. And it's not particularly, it's not deep or it's not going to take a long time. Yeah. Yeah, temperature's definitely dropping now. My hat's all screw with. Um, yeah, so a doggy saves blank. I'm hoping, turn the tide, tide's starting to move and as the light falls and it gets dark hopefully it'll all come alive see how it goes it's surprising you know that even boats this small they come with their own proper toilet you have to flush it yourself though came ready to put now I bought this it's my little baler and it's my urine <laughs> it's my urine <laughs> you wouldn't want to do a number two in there <laughs> it's mid-november and it's cold <laughs> I've put my coat on I've got my hoodie on I've got my hat on and I know it sounds obvious because it's mid-november but we've been lured into a false sense of security lately because it's been really mild it's, it's Oh, <laughs> I've got my thermal suit on emergency standby. So, if it all goes really, really cold, just watching the red jet go out. Um, yeah, calm seas, light winds. The forecast is for storms. One doggy to save the blank. Um, just need something else, don't we? We need something to liven the night up. I've got a funny feeling, as soon as it gets dark, the tide is starting to flood now. It is the early part of the flood. Um, what is it, half past four, nine? I've got five hours of the flood. Um, and I think that the first couple of hours of the flood, <laughs> that got my attention, didn't it? 
<laughs> Real clicking away there. Yeah, can't feel anything there. But that's exactly what I was talking about. I leave the clickers on the reels. So even if I'm doing something else, yeah, because on a boat you're looking out for other people and other things and what's going on. Um, yeah, <laughs> clicker gets your attention straight away, doesn't it? It doesn't need much. But I'm hoping now, as it's getting, as it's getting darker, we're getting to the witching hour. <laughs> it's going to be interesting fishing as well. Fishing in the dark from the boat. Hard to tell because a set of waves have just come in. But I think I've just had a bite on this rod. Oh yeah, we've got something there I think. Oh yeah, there's something there. Oh, I hope this isn't an eel. <laughs> I don't know. It's going all right. What have we got? It's a bit head shaky. And, oh no, it's a doggy. <laughs> it's a doggy. Lights out, doggies are out. With these single hooks, they are only hooking nicely in the uh, in the edge of the mouth, which is good. Both of these hooked exactly the same way, right in the corner. <laughs> One doggy. a little inquiry on this rod. See if we've got any. It might be the start of the plague of the tings, don't know. Doesn't feel like I've got anything here, no weight to it. Let's have a look. Yeah, something's had a go at that. <laughs> I think we might have, um, the tings might have awoken. <laughs> so I've just switched the head torch off, obviously you won't be able to see. Had a little inquiry on that. That might be the start of the tings, because a doggy would have taken that bait. Um, and it's all good. So it's now dark, as you can see, pitch black behind me. We're fishing in the dark. It's all exciting. It's exciting stuff. The other guys are still here. They're anchored just over there. Um, we're in full flood now, so what time is it? What have we got? Quarter past five, so we've got a good four hours of the flood. I think I'm going to fish two or three hours of it. Got plenty of bait, I ain't got to worry about bait. It's just I've got to get back up the river, do a night navigation up the river. Um, night navigation up the river, and I've got to put the boat back on the trailer because it storms all from tomorrow all next week. I don't want to leave it in the water, so it'll be out on its trailer, back put away. So yeah, a good two, three hours of fishing and then we'll pack up. Hopefully it will start livening up now. I thought it was only a matter of time. And the tings have arrived. <laughs> the tiny ting. Ooh, I'm gonna get this little critter back in. I think I've got one on the other rod. And he's away, little tiny ting. I wonder if it will see anything, in, well it won't do will it, if I switch this off, switch this off, oh look, <laughs> it's pitch black, there we go, hi, <laughs> oh, tide's swinging around a bit now, Hopefully a bit of movement with the water as the tide livens up. Maybe the fish will proper come on the feed. At the moment, I have got three sand eels wrapped together on the right rod, and I've got three squid heads, small squid heads, on the left rod. It really is very, very quiet. I haven't had any bites, hardly a touch. And I thought it'd all come alive, so. We're in full flood now, and I would have thought that bites would have started hitting. Um, it's just not happening, and I can't figure it out. 
keep swapping baits. I know the, the my rig's nailed to the bottom. I've upped the weight. It's definitely on the bottom. I can feel it's on the bottom. It's just not happening. So, so I'm back at the boatyard now. Um, I've just done the night nav back up the river. Always interesting. Nearly took a wrong turn, even though I've got all my sat nav and all my plotter and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, a little bit confusing one little bit. So every time I'm coming up, up and down the river, late at night, in the dark, it's all a learning curve. I'm learning more. Um, I packed those two lines away and I had a fish on both. I had, I'd packed the camera away because I was getting ready to leave. I was starting to concentrate on lifting the anchor because it's always, it's difficult. It's not this difficult, but in the dark, it's a little bit more, you don't want to wrap a rope around your prop. Um, so you have to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, so I had another doggy on one and I had another ting on the other. So that was three doggies, three tings, nothing significant. Um, they can't all be white letter days, can they? So I thought it'd fish a little bit better. It didn't. Three doggies, three tings, saved the blank. The noise you can hear in the background is the motorway. That's the M27. Um, yeah. So I enjoyed coming out. It was good. In the dark makes it puts a little bit of an edge on everything and just going to go through the recovery process now in the dark with the fishing wagon <laughs> it's going to be interesting on my own um, putting a boat on a trailer behind a van that's got no rear view mirror it's interesting i need to sort myself out a camera i need to see, sort myself out a rear view camera and a spotlight so i can recover in the dark i'll manage it i'll get it done um so Thank you for joining me. It's disappoint disappointing for a girl. Um, we can try again later. <laughs> Tight lines and happy fishing. I always enjoy spending time with you. Look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. But for me, for now, goodbye.